Hey everybody, welcome on back. It's the Rubbin' His Racing Podcast. It's myself, it's uh, Spider in Chicago sitting right next to Quiggs. And on the ones and twos, it's Manoli Stavraka, St- Manoli, uh, the Greek. He's going to be our producer for today. Uh, Rubbin' His Racing is presented by Cabo Wabo Tequila, which I have right here if you're watching on Rumble. Cabo Wabo Tequila is unquestionably Mexican tequila with an undeniably American attitude. And it isn't just tequila, it's damn good. Damn good. Cut. Blue, blue Weber agave. 100% Blue Weber? <laughs> 100%. <laughs> you might want to redo that. I stumbled over my That's words. okay. Cabo Wabo isn't just tequila. It's damn good, thick cut, 100% Blue Weber Agave tequila. Cabo Wabo tequila is the official tequila partner of NASCAR at a bold splash to race day watching uh, with Cabo Wabo tequila. So if you're heading to the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400 at Texas Motor Speedway, come celebrate race day with Cabo Wabo. And they want to remind you, Leave the driving to the professionals this weekend, so please enjoy the thick-cut, bold taste of Cabo Wabo tequila responsibly. Grab your buds and a bottle of Cabo Wabo tequila for the boldest race day experience, but you got to be 21 years or older, and you have to handle it responsibly. Thank you so much, Cabo Wabo. I'm going to enjoy some as soon as we get done with this podcast. All righty, boys. Welcome on back. How's everybody doing? Spider, how are you? Fantastic. Back yes. in Chicago following a great weekend at Martinsville for the first time, so I uh, was pumped to be there. Successful trip. Everything was awesome. And Frank the Tank crushed it with the Grand Marshal obligations. And now back in Chicago for a very busy week. We got a mini golf tournament going on in the Chicago office, um, amongst other things. But good to be back home. Condolences to uh, the NC State Wolfpack. Um, Yeah, people who don't know, that's Quiggs' team. And um, he went out to Phoenix. I busted his chops about how he doesn't travel for NASCAR. But all of a sudden, Big Cat says, hey, you want to come to a baseball game? Oh, yeah, sure. I'll do a fucking Big Cat. But uh, yeah. I apologize that. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's all right. Yeah. We, we shouldn't have been there anyway. But uh, it was a it was a very cool experience. Yeah. You know, my son had asked me if he could go out to the Final Four in Phoenix. And I said, no, because we don't have the money. But I think it's better to celebrate probably on campus for him because he's, you know, he's at Alabama. And I think yeah. it's, he's probably feeling better about himself seeing how dominant UConn was going down the stretch. All right, that's enough basketball talk. Uh, let's get into it. So last week I had spoke about, this is in the DM section, I spoke about a short track legend, uh, Bubba Pollard. Uh, just kind of, I thought, bringing the information of this guy to the masses who may not know him. I did get some kickback from people who are huge fans saying that I had no business at even being on a podcast, a NASCAR podcast, without knowing Bubba Pollard, a lot of people defended me. It went back and forth. Clicks are good, so it doesn't matter. Chaos is a ladder. Bubba Pollard himself, um, who had ran the Xfinity race last week, had commented saying when I said he kind of looked like Fred Flintstone, he loved it. He thought that it was extremely funny. So much so that he's selling a T-shirt now at, uh, at his website, and we're going to try to put up a link, and I'll, I'll link it on my social as well. But I think – I don't even know if it's BubbaPollard.com. I ordered a T-shirt from him already, this kind of redneck Jesus T-shirt. Now he has one because of my comments. He's selling a T-shirt called – I think it says Bubba Dubba Do, and it's him <laughs> as Fred Flintstone, and it's awesome. It's so shirt. I ordered a couple. They haven't come yet. Otherwise, I'd be rocking it right now. I'll be wearing it at some point during, you know, this season. I urge you all. The, there it is. I urge you all to jump to uh, Bubba Pollard's uh, website and pick one of these up. The only reason he's selling it is because I had thrown out that, you know, playful barb. He liked it. He's capitalizing on it. And I hope he makes a shitload of money. And I hope people who had a problem with this beforehand will at some point get a big old fucking bag of dicks and just eat them. Right, just eat that big old fucking bag yeah, of dicks. Go. Yeah, and open invites above Apollo to ever come on this uh, podcast. This, oh. this podcast is good for about two of those a year. Yeah, a clip that gets out there that's just like all the comments are like, "These guys have no business having a podcast." <laughs> yeah. I think that people forget to like realize what the show is about, and it's really about like the new audience and getting people into it. And, yeah, yes. And- kind of covering what NASCAR is from a casual lens. There's plenty of podcasts that can break down the ins and outs um, of the actual technology or what we're seeing on track or why, you know, this race was this way or certain things like that. But that is not what this is. So I think certain people uh, oftentimes get that confused. We're never going to be the Dale Jr. download. There's room for both. Um, And yeah. And I think that every one of those podcasts does a good job some better than others but there's a lot of them there are a lot of ones where just two buddies who really love uh nascar and have loved it since the womb get up there and they talk about the race 
uh, more of an X's and O's type thing. Every, there's a lot of them out there. Go ahead and take a look at them. There's a lot of them that have gambling stuff attached to them. Go ahead and take a look at them. We don't give a fuck. But I think this one is one of those ones that's a little bit different. Like, again, we're trying to Ted Lasso this shit. And yeah. uh, from what I understand, from all intent, for, in, for all intents and purposes, we've been relatively successful, particularly with the feedback that we've gotten on social from NASCAR when we go to the track and beyond. Um, one of the things that I thought, so Bubba Pollard, uh, no apologies uh, given. Fred Flintstone looking son of a bitch. And I hope you guys buy a million fucking T-shirts. Um, one of the things that I'm going to mention uh, because I just mentioned T-shirts is Spider and I um, and a small crew were at Martinsville. We're going to get into the whole trip this weekend uh, on this episode. But one of the things I thought was very nice, I'm a big minor league baseball guy. Every time I go traveling with the family, we like to do road trips more than put the kids on planes a lot. So if we're traveling anywhere around the United States, I try to set up trips where we can also go to a random minor league baseball game. Um, I spoke to people from the Daytona Tortugas a couple of years ago during the pandemic because they had pivoted and started doing uh, movie nights at the park where you bring a blanket and they'd play like Field of Dreams on the Diamond Vision. And people would just hang out, eat hot dogs, drink beer, sit down. And I thought that was kind of a cool little pivot. So I did some work with the Daytona Tortugas. Uh, and since then, I've had a couple other minor league teams either reach out to me or visit them. While we were down in Martinsville, a gentleman named Austin had shown up. He uh, works with the Danville Otterbots and the Danville Dairy Daddies. The Otterbots are, um, are these robot robotic otters. That's, that's their thing. And the whole idea behind it is that the mascot is kind of an homage to Wendell Scott. I think it's Scotter the Otter. And we mentioned Wendell Scott a couple of weeks ago when uh, Kruth had gotten his, his victory. We were talking about how Wendell was the trailblazer uh, for African-Americans, black guys uh, winning NASCAR races. And he's got a real interesting story. Beyond that, he used to pack some heat with him in the car just in case shit popped off. He was ready to fucking bust the cap, that type of shit. So... This guy had come, met Spider and I, dropped a shitload of merch on us that has like either a cow on it. Some or, great merch. Yeah, or robotic otter. I can't tell you guys enough. Go visit NASCAR tracks in these smaller towns, particularly like Martinsville. And while you're there, if it happens to fit the schedule, go see a minor league baseball game. I think it's sort of hand in hand because they work very hard to get any kind of money that they're drawing from you as opposed to going to Yankee Stadium and paying $1,000 to sit in fucking legend seats. So I shout out to the Otterbots and to uh, the, Austin. the Dairy Daddies and, and Austin. We appreciate your support. Um, and that's it. All right. Um, headlines. We're going to get a couple of headlines, and they're brought to you by Vanderhagen Razors. Make the switch from cartridge razor to safety razor today with Vanderhagen. Safety razors allow you to get a closer, more comfortable shave. I have one right now on the top of my head. The use of one-blade razors help prevent nicks and cuts while making your skin feel smoother than ever. And the best part, these blades cost as little as a dollar a piece and last anywhere from three to five shaves. This will save you thousands of dollars over the years compared to the cost of cartridge razors. The blades are ice-tempered, stainless steel blades from Germany that are sharp enough to give you the perfect shave. The handle is made to last a lifetime, so the only recurring purchase you will have is for the blades. I used it across a sunburned head, and it's actually very gentle on the skin. I got an extremely close shade. So check out your local Target or Rite Aid and get yourself a Vanderhagen safety razor today. We got good news and bad news and headlines this week, boys. Uh, good news or bad news first? What do you want? Let's do bad first. All right, terrible news for the Labonte family. Bobby Labonte announced on Tuesday that he and his older brother Terry lost their father, Bob Labonte, last week. Bob was a two-time car owner champion and crew chief in the Bush Series. He was 90 when he passed away. You want to talk about being a parent? I'm a parent of two boys and a girl as well. Bob Labonte had two kids who were in racing, perhaps more, but Bobby and Terry individually are in the uh, NASCAR Hall of Fame. So this guy had done very well by his kids. You see so many athletic parents, parents of athletes, um, who are always working to have their kids go to the next level, to see your two kids go to the highest level in their sport. Um, and from all accounts, I was listening to Larry this morning, uh, McReynolds, talking about what a good person he was. So rest in peace to um, to Bob Labonte, and our condolences go out to the Labonte family. That's the bad part. The good part, Spider and I were getting our credentials at Martinsville on Saturday? Saturday, we, we yeah, were there. Yeah, Saturday morning. And as we're at the credential hauler, um, shout out Lindsay for helping us out and Jake. Um, we see Chase Briscoe. Chase Briscoe pulls up in his SUV. Uh, the day before, one of Briscoe's 
representatives and said, Chase is going to be around if you guys want to do something with him because we're very friendly with him. We do anything with the guy. I said, yeah, let's have a Martinsville hot dog. And he's like, oh, no, no, Chase Briscoe is steak and chicken fingers, and that's it. <laughs> he's like fucking quigs. So, yeah, that is me. <laughs> exactly. He, and so when I spoke to him about it in his car, he's like, oh, my God, Large, I don't, I don't, diver- I don't try spicy anything. I don't think he's ever tried a vegetable either. Speaking about non-spicy stuff, he's just a very picky eater. But that's not the point. His lovely wife was sitting in the passenger seat, and I had noticed that she had gained some weight. I was extremely close to asking, how are you doing? And how far along are you? Because she's not looks, she doesn't look like somebody that would gain weight like I would. And I didn't, because that's the ultimate fucking Smart. faux pas. What, some, what trimester are you in? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> oh, that would be terrible. So, um, But it doesn't matter, because about an hour after we left them, it had hit Twitter that the Briscoe family, Chase and Marissa, are expecting twins to go along with big brother Brooks. So for expecting twins, Marissa looks absolutely fantastic, and we wish them all the best luck in the world for bringing in two very expensive kids in the upcoming months. So good news and bad news. You'd agree, right? Yeah, Spider, absolutely. I, I told you, right? As soon as we left him, I was like, is his wife pregnant? You're like, lucky you didn't say it. Well, yeah, honestly, I didn't notice that large with an observant eye. Mm-hmm. And then um, I saw it come across Twitter like an hour later at the track. So large was uh, largey scoops. <laughs> yeah, one for that, one. Yeah, that would have been a one. Bit. But imagine I was wrong, right? Yeah. yeah. And like every other driver, his wife is very attractive. Chase is goofy looking. He knows it. I know it. Um, and so I would have, it just would have been a fucking bad look. All right. The big smoke of the week, not really the big smoke of the week. Cause we've had stuff happen since then. But when this all of a sudden hit the wires, we'll say it was huge. Uh, Denny Hamlin versus Marcus Smith from Speedway Motorsports. He's the CEO of Speedway, uh, Speedway Motorsports. For people who don't know, because you're new to NASCAR, Speedway Motorsports owns 10 circuits that the NASCAR Cup Series currently uses. Otherwise, NASCAR owns most of the tracks. But Speedway owns Sonoma, Charlotte, North Wilkesboro, Texas, Bristol, Atlanta, Las Vegas, New Hampshire, Dover, and, and Nashville. Did I say Nashville twice? No, I didn't. So they own those 10 tracks outside of it and they had put on social media that one of their tracks sonoma Re, uh, sonoma raceway which was repaved in february um is having portions of the repaved surface all of a sudden come up for non-nascar racing that's been going on on that track so sonoma's been repaved the repaving doesn't seem like it's taking right so um nascar will not race in sonoma till june but denny hamlin said on twitter with a clip of the asphalt coming up, and this is the quote, when paving on a budget goes wrong, North Wilkesboro will be next. So shot fired by Denny Hamlin. Quiggs, you were watching this real time, right? Like when this was going back and forth, or were you already starting to go to Final Four? The the Twitter interaction? Yes. Yeah, I saw the Twitter interaction. Didn't you immediately recognize that we were about to get inappropriate? It just seemed like this was about to be a battle. Right? Yeah, because it was it was very much like two guys who were experts in the in their field. It's the guy who's an expert at building tracks, and then the guy who's an expert at racing on them, and they had completely opposite opinions. And I was like, "This is going to be good." And Spider, then I'm going to ask you. Almost directly after this happened, we had Denny come and be the biggest sweetheart in the fucking world with Frank. I almost didn't want to bust his balls about this, right? Yeah, because, I, yeah. I didn't want to ask him about it. It's just interesting to me that, uh, like, this all transpired when I was on a flight, and then by the time I land and see all the aftermath, everything's deleted. But I think Quiggs is right. Um, It's interesting coming from two very prominent figures in their respective kind of industry, um, as much as it is the same industry. But my point is, like, Denny... I don't know. I just think it's really really interesting for, for Denny and both Ty Gibbs to come on uh, Denny on Twitter and then Ty Gibbs on this very show say that they were not super fond of Atlanta when I watched Atlanta this year and that to me was one of the best races we've seen I couldn't look away so um, hearing the drivers take on Atlanta and the redesign being a lot different kind of opposite of mine which I complimented Marcus Smith for is um, definitely interesting and surprising and that narrative from the drivers seems a lot louder by the week whether it be ty gibbs last week or denny on twitter this week so interesting it got personal like it got personal real quick i mean when denny had said north wilkesboro is next smith then responded this is a great post from somebody who doesn't know all the information ignorance on display for the world to see 
that's 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 return fire. That that matches what Denny had sent. I had thought, and then Hamlin wouldn't let the matter rest there, so he continued referencing Speedway Motorsports reconfiguration uh, record. And Smith also said, "Yeah, we take risks. Sometimes they work. Sometimes they don't." We've seen your attempts at the championship as well. When you have a champ chance, maybe you could give me some golf tips. That's where he crossed the line. Up until then, it was just like two guys disagreeing on Twitter about something that is like whatever. The second you're like calling out, I don't know, calling him out, saying like, hey, show me some golf tips. That, like, that yeah. is like Rico Bosco telling fucking the Wisconsin coach right before the dance, like like the, the NCAA tournament, like, hey, I know you're not getting past the first weekend. Like, where are you going golfing next weekend? Yeah. Like, that is just, you know, you're poking the bear. So, I think from there, Danny Hamlin, uh, who is arguably one of the best, I would say it's Danny and Bubba that are the best, most active um, on social in terms yeah. of drivers. Like, you poke the bear, of course he's going to respond. And to me, Danny's response absolutely murdered him. Um, yeah. Here's your he's... golf tip. Let yeah. someone else run your business before you blow everything your dad gave you. <laughs> yeah. Holy Ooh. shit. That is, I mean, there's no great. So, um, Marcus Smith's dad, uh, his father, who's passed away, was uh, former CEO of uh, Speedway Motorsports, Alan Bruton Smith. Um, this got very personal very quickly. And as much as I like smoke, it shouldn't have happened. I think, in retrospect, because. Uh, Marcus had then deleted most of his stuff. Perhaps someone told him to do it. Perhaps he just came to his senses. And then him and Denny kind of had a come to Jesus moment. Um, but there's a tremendous amount of frustration that I really wasn't as privy to. Like when Spider says Denny's complained about it before a tie. But like NASCAR's revenues from their media rights agreements, 100% of those, 65% of those media rights revenues, I believe, go to the tracks. Then the teams get 25%, NASCAR gets 10 So Denny has a horse in this race saying that if you're getting the bulk of these revenues and you're not doing the right thing with them as far as putting down asphalt for us to race on, you're a fuck-up and fix it quickly. And so I can kind of see that. But this was pretty childish, and I think everyone had a lot of re uh, resent not resentment, a lot of regret once it got up there. Because Denny doesn't pull back on anything. He seems to be extremely pig-headed, you know, when he has a feeling about something and he sticks with it. But this one, I think, is one he wants to dial back. Do you guys agree? Yeah, I think it's just one of those situations where no one really comes out looking good. And yeah. it's like, sure, they got some, you know, good responses off. Like I said, I like Denny's kill shot. But at the end of the day, like, that is not – making anyone look better it's not helping anyone's case i think it's a lose-lose all around and i think they both kind of smelled the flowers and realized that and deleted it now i'm not going to sit here and say there wasn't someone else in their ear i i wouldn't be surprised if nascar reached out to both parties and was like clean this shit up this and for the same reasons that i just said like this is not making anyone look good um but yeah i think I, the only solution is to just kind of like apologize and move forward whether whether Danny is holding that grudge and still feels that way or he actually truly feels remorseful for saying some of the shit but I don't know like what are they you, you, like no one if this were a driver driver beef yeah there's at least a silver lining in that we might get some drama on the track out of it whether it be hard nose racing or a post race fight like this is just like Twitter fingers that probably didn't need to see the light of day it's kind of like just airing out dirty laundry for no benefit. Even, I mean, there was a benefit, but minimal. I mean, even if it, yeah, like maybe lose lose, but I think it's way more lose for Marcus Smith. Yeah, it just it's hard to win an argument that your tracks aren't like a piece of shit if there's just like photo and video evidence of your track like crumbling, like six months um, after. So yeah, when, the, when that you yourself like, posted. Yes. Yes. Okay. That that there's just. The the whole thread is happening underneath a picture of just pavement coming off a track, and they're arguing about whether the track is good or not. Right. So that, I think, it's, it's just a tough look for Marcus Smith a little bit, but um, I don't know. It's fun. It's, it's also probably, like, maybe something that needs to be called out and brought to, like, the bigger public's attention. Well, I mean, Denny is a driver and a co-owner, right? So... 
if the tracks are pocketing money that could be better used if it went to the teams, who better to call out than Denny Hamlin? But it's also been 2024 has been the year of Denny Hamlin already on top of executing three wins to the counted. Right. And the restart was the biggest. The restart with Richmond was the biggest headline from the week before Denny Hamlin. The biggest one going into this was Denny Hamlin versus Marcus Smith. And the biggest voice after Martinsville, we'll get into in a little bit, is probably Denny Hamlin. So that's that's pretty fucking consistent. I don't know if you see that in other sports as much. What were you saying, Spider? I kind of I kind of feel like Denny Hamlin wears like a badge of like almost being like the veteran voice of the sport. Like I've seen this on a couple examples. Like for me, this started out relatively innocent. Like Quig said, it was black and white. The track looked like shit. Denny Hamlin called it out and shined light on his concern with that track. I don't think it was a personal attack at Marcus Smith until it became personal. Um, but I look at in, in past history, I feel like Denny Hamlin has a history of kind of setting narratives for things, whether it be, Hey, um, what, what race was it earlier? This was it the clash when he's like, Hey, we can get the clash in tonight, like run the race now. Yep. Um, even at the Chicago street race last year, he said, let's move the race to Monday. So I'm not saying his track record for calling these things is necessarily, um, good, but I think that there is a value in having Denny Hamlin as a veteran voice in the sport, kind of give advice and, and, um, be a consultant for certain things. And I, I think this, truly started as something innocent and turned into something kind of uh, toxic. Let's go and talk about something that Denny Hamlin bodied, and that uh, was with us this weekend. So we'll get into the recap. Uh, let's go through the weekend, Spider, because I think, again, NASCAR is more of an experience to me than it is a race, right? I'm, I'm really loving everything about it from the culture on down to what goes on in the track. So we went to Martinsville this weekend. Spider was able to get there a little bit easier than me. I will tell you, I had all intents and purposes of being out there on Friday. There was a little something here in New York called an earthquake. So I sat in fucking Newark Airport for seven hours, delaying an hour, an hour and a half, pulling it back a half hour so you felt a little better about yourself, going out two hours. After seven hours, they finally canceled my flight. United can go, you dick. And uh, I got out on an early flight the next day from Delta where I connected through Atlanta and finally got to see Spider on Saturday. Um... Spider, talk to me about Martinsville and your impressions of what we had done on Saturday, a hotel, the whole way around. Give people an idea of what a race at Martinsville is like. Yeah, Saturday is really cool. Um, we woke up in the in the motel and um, yeah, how was that? The, so the hotel, I guess I called it a murder hotel previously on the show. <laughs> and then when Frank arrived, he actually we had an epiphany together. That it wasn't as much a murder hotel, but more of a suicide hotel. Like, oh. this looks like a hotel you book to blow your head off inside of. <laughs> um, which was kind of equally unsettling. But anyways, we left the hotel. I couldn't wait to get out there. We walked over to the track. Beautiful day on Sunday. Uh, it was it was pretty cold, I should say. But, I mean, at least beautiful in the sense that it wasn't raining, which is always a dub in NASCAR. Mm -hmm. Um and then, uh, yeah, we, we met the Dude Wipes people, the Dude Wipes clients. We were there with Anthony Alfredo, who drove the Dude Wipes number five car for the Dude Wipes 250, which Frank was the grand marshal of. So Frank was down there. Um, we were joined alongside Jake Butt, who waved the green flag. And then um, Frank gave the command and said, drivers, start your engines in pretty incredible fashion. Um, and Frank the Tank fashion, he did a great job. I should have known he he would gonna was gonna body that. I've been at so many rough and rowdies with him. Which, by the way, we've got a rough and rowdy upcoming April nineteenth in West Virginia. Make sure you're going. Large and I will both be there. But he always starts off the show with West Virginia. Are you ready to get rough? Are you ready to get rowdy? Let's get rough and rowdy. And it's iconic, Frank the Tank. And this was kind of a similar assignment. I think he bodied it. Absolute home run. Um, was was it the plan for him to always do that? Yes. I, like, I didn't know that he was doing that. Um, that was that I was. I yeah, I don't think they I don't think they put as much shine on it as they did because we had the Frank walks with yeah. Denny Hamlin. But it was always the plan that it was a sponsored event. You know, Dude Wipes was sponsoring the whole race, the Dude Wipes 250. Yeah. So on behalf like Spider and I are wearing the the uh, the shirts Crew shirts. Yeah. As a matter of fact, if you look when Jake Butt is waving the green flag. He had borrowed my shirt, so his shirt says large on it. Um, you're welcome. Uh, but, yeah, so it was always going to be what they didn't account for 
um, the Dude Wipes people nor the NASCAR people was that there was a Met game going on simultaneously. <laughs> and right before Frank went on, somebody had missed a bunt or something like that and or misplayed a bunt, and Frank had a small meltdown, as he tends to do, because he's a... Um, uh, I don't know what you want to call it. He's a crazy passionate shiver. fan. He's a very passionate <laughs> fan, and so, but he just needed that four minute, that four minutes to get it out, and then right went right back to being as professional as fuck. But I will tell you, Saturday was cold. Saturday was it was a night race. It was it was um, it was cold, and it wasn't as cold in the afternoon when Denny and his crew had showed up, and Spider, myself, we were P two. Oh, excuse me, we were uh, row two. Spider was P3, I was P4. And front row was uh, Frank Tank and Denny Hamlin. And we walked the track in Martinsville twice. So we did just over a mile, and then we walked in and out. So it was extremely nice. It was an episode of Frank Walks. Uh, Denny had brought his mom, Mary Lou, who we had known uh, from Nashville. Denny had busted my chops. Stop buying my mom drinks. And so she was really uh, happy to see us again, which was wonderful. Denny's people had bought Frank a pair of those Forrest Gumps, the Nike Forrest Gumps. Shout um, out Austin. Yeah, so uh, so it was very, very cool. Uh, Frank gave uh, Denny a, a, a Frank Walks t-shirt <laughs> that, I mean, it looked like he was he carried in the crack of his ass. I mean, he gave this thing, <laughs> you know, it was all wrinkled, and Denny's like, oh, okay, nice. Um, but it was just, it was like watching these two guys go back and forth and ask questions and whatnot. Denny had a, a, had a legitimate interest in what Frank had to say and vice versa. And for as many people who hate Denny Hamlin, and you, can, you hate him all you want. It doesn't matter. He's an asshole. He can be an asshole. Man, he was a fucking gem with Frank on Saturday. So thank you to the 2311 crew and thank you to Denny. Right, weren't you impressed with that, Spider? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're fortunate to have a great relationship with Denny, so I kind of know what to expect. And I don't mean to take for granted the fact that he's always good to us, but... Um, it just seemed like another Denny Hamlin interaction at this point with us. And that, to me, is, is a testament to who he actually is. Feel any type of way about, um, you know, the driving. But I think he's a good dude. He's always been good to us. I can only judge people on, you know, my interactions with them and what I see. So Denny checks all the boxes, and that's nothing new. Like I said, he's done that time and time again. So I'm glad Frank could experience that and um, get to meet him for himself. I think... Frank Walks was incredible, and it was. I felt great. Just it was humbling to be a part of that uh, that crew. Was there one disappointing part of Frank being there this weekend? Is there one thing he didn't do that's going to be a glaring omission to everybody on social media? He didn't end up doing it. Did not. Did oh not. my god. Yes. Yeah. How? I I don't know. So Frank, for people who don't know, Frank does <clears throat> hot dog reviews, and um, what are they called? Do you remember? Raw dogging. Raw dogging. Raw dogging to Frank, and then he judges his hot dogs on a scale of one to five or something. And he's he's known for it and goes all over the country and does it. He comes to Martinsville, and it wound up his schedule kind of tightened up because he had to get back for Frank's walks um, early Monday. So he wound up not staying for Sunday's race because all the stuff we did was the Xfinity race with him on Saturday. So he never got to do a Martinsville hot dog, which I thought was a huge Bad. missed opportunity. So that's probably the only thing – that we didn't get to, but otherwise, um, him and Jenks and Mikey Betts, shout out Mikey Betts, who's there doing his thing. Um, it was pretty cool hanging out with them at a track. Uh, and then Amarola got a win, which was nice. Yeah, we got a win. Um, and it was absolutely fucking freezing uh, when he did. And then Sunday comes around, and Sunday. Wait, 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 wait. Ahead. We have to. Oh. I I have to talk about. Oh please, please. I thought what the the most amazing clip ever is. Frank the Tank in the pace car, and they just pan to him in the front seat, and he's playing his uh, sports grid where he's picking the players that played on that was each awesome. team. And it was like to him, it's he might as well have just been riding in an Uber, riding through Newark, New Jersey with Jags driving him. I, just, I that video was amazing to me. He's very nonplussed by his his newfound celebrity. Oh yeah, you know, like, and it's it's pretty cool to see, <laughs> like just. As he's going through, listen, Spider and I are lucky enough to get recognized at every track we go to. And it's very fucking cool. And sometimes when we take people from here, they go down there. NASCAR people aren't necessarily barstool sports fans. So people who are insanely popular with stoolies, nobody knows them in NASCAR. Frank dances both lines. 
like a lot of people you know like Riley Herbst like except Frank the Tank like you know you saw that with people's clips throughout the weekend you know drivers and whatnot so um yeah so I regret that he didn't get to try Martinsville dog obviously if we had him around on Sunday we could have introduced him to a lot more people but I realize he's a very busy man also so so busy do you think King? this this is off topic but what I thought you were going to say large said he was freezing and you were like, oh, I got something to say. I thought you were going to mention Stuart Friesen versus Timmy Hill argument, which I feel like we need to talk about briefly. Timmy Hill, one of the nicest guys in the whole circuit. I've always seen him smiling with that Fasoli grin on his mouth, <laughs> ear to ear, like just the biggest smile, the nicest guy, never upset. I've never actually, I can't remember a time seeing Timmy Hill mad. And then after the truck race Friday night, his reaction, he goes right over to Stuart Friesen and is like, I've never wrecked you. I've never um, done that to you. Like, treat me with some respect. We're in a series with a bunch of fucking kids. I can understand if it's the kids that do that. But you're you're meant to be better than that. And I kind of love Timmy Hill for that, yeah. seeing that side of him um, go to bat for himself. He, I feel like oftentimes he's almost too nice, and he seems like a guy that could be taken advantage of by his competitors. Um, but to see him go to bat for himself was refreshing and Good to know that Timmy Hill has a little dog in him. Yeah, good for him. I they they didn't mince words. I get fucking wasted every fucking week, Friesen said as Hill walked up to him on pit road. You got wasted by everybody else except fucking me. I didn't waste you. These fucking kids did. You're better than that, Timmy Hill replied. You're absolutely right, the veteran racer said as he admitted his mistake. You're supposed to be better than that. Out of these fucking kids, you're supposed to be better, concluded Timmy Hill as he walked away. Which is spot on logic. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't, and again, we'll probably get crucified for let me assuming my knowledge of the truck series, but mm -hmm. I feel like Stort and guys like Matt Crafton are like probably some of the most veteran guys that have been there forever. And a lot of them, for the most part, are these young kids trying to make their way, cut their teeth into something bigger. So I very much see where Timmy Hill's coming from. If you're going to be the veteran in a series full of um, kids with higher aspirations and just running truck races, you very much can't be that guy that's causing uh, wrecks. And or, I, yeah, no, I, I agree with you 100%. And then after serving a record number of margaritas following his racing, they blew chilies and Hallmark Freezing Racing bring fans the whole menu. Did you happen to see that? The new I truck? I uh, think they have the actual. So he's going to be running a chilies truck. Um, and instead of just having the traditional chilies logos and stuff on it, they actually have the menu. All over the car. <laughs> I did not see that. I didn't see what it was wrapped with, but yeah. I kind of like that. Yeah, and you know, like the menu at Chili's is idiot proof. Like each next to each dish, they have a picture of the dish. That way, you could just kind of point to what you want, and th that's ex it's the exact menu <laughs> wrapped around the. 52. Are you looking at a description of it or a picture? I'm looking at a picture of it right now. Is yeah. it bad? Uh, you know, I or does it work? So it's got the big red chili, with the chili with the S on it on the hood and it's you know yeah. it's got the pretty clear 52 right on the door but the rest of it from far away just looks like a fucking mess i that's think that's what oh my god i'm looking at it, it yeah looks that's like, it's hard to make sense of <laughs> yeah it's tough. like it, i i think it's cool like in if you're close there or if you get to see it on the track and close up but from yeah. far away this thing does uh, no it does it doesn't look good to me you know it looks like La one of those... LaJoy had a great chili skin yeah. like a and simple I was right. going to say, I love that Chili's is now seemingly getting more and more into the sport, which I think I welcome with open arms. One of my favorite fast, oh, yeah. uh, ca fast casual chains. I love Chili's. Yeah, Chili's is elite. Chips and salsa wave them in. Let's get Chips to Sunday, Sp Spider. We wake up on Sunday. It's an absolutely gorgeous morning. Absolutely Beautiful. gorgeous morning. Um, we go over to the track, and we get invited to the driver's meeting. We we're going to do a hauler tour with Denny for uh, Frank, but we had canceled that since we've been to so many haulers. And we went to the driver's meeting. First, Thanks to Justin. Shout out Justin from NASCAR, always taking care of us. Put us right always. in like row two in the driver's meeting. I was literally <laughs> sitting next to Ross Chastain. <laughs> yes, exactly. You're sitting next to Ross. And uh, one of the special guests that they had there was Jeff Bodine. And he would gotten up and started talking some shit about um, Jeff Gordon. And Spider uh, leaned over to me and he's like, NASCAR is holding their breath right now. Because <laughs> yeah, Jeff it looked, looked like, like he... the whole room. 
was <laughs> like, what's he going to say next? Because I don't know if he has a history of saying crazy shit or what, but that's just the vibe I got. It was like the, they very much looked a little concerned when he went behind the podium and started getting on the mic. I don't think he was invited up. Like That's <laughs> the whole that's... thing. Like The young lady who does it, there's, a, there's always a bunch of dignitaries or guests or celebrities at the driver's meeting uh, that they introduce uh, for the cup race. And n- none of them get up and speak, you know. So our official starter is going to be uh, Liv from the WWE. She gets up and does one of these. The uh, the person who started like Bucky's was there. Got up and do one of these. Uh, Jeff Bodine is. Jeff gets up there and grabs the mic. <laughs> He's like, "Where's Jeff Gordon?" He ran me into a wall, and so could have went either way. But the guy is is such a legend that it was it was absolutely perfect. So, uh, Probably had that feeling of like being at a wedding and yeah. the they're doing the speeches and then all of a sudden like the drunk uncle yes. that is just a loose cannon yeah. gets the mic and you're like what well, well, this cannot be good yeah and they had like a lot of Bodine's cars out in the fan experience which which is so fucking smooth um, so it was kind of cool to see part of the weekend at least dedicated to him and uh, and he did a very good job Got, had the whole. Had the whole room like r- rolling on the floor. The drivers really enjoyed it and stuff. So it was it was good. It was a cool little drivers meeting. Um, shout out! I didn't get the guy's name, but there was a couple of guys there that were drinking all weekend. One of them had all in shape with the eleven for the two L's. So all in shaved into his chest there. And they were fans of the show, and so we spent a little bit of time with them. So I wish I would have remembered the guys' names, but uh, shout out to them. I wound up having uh, six of the Martinsville dogs uh, just to you know to do my thing spider had one right we did yeah, a little I had taste about testing. i had about one i did a one bite review yeah did a little one bite review um i got on the plane the next day i had to go straight to dallas to cover some uh ryan garcia stuff which has been extremely interesting and um it, it, things went south on me real quick i almost had to take a dump on a plane so my whole thing about martinsville hot dogs they are absolutely delicious i get them all the way Nothing to it. I love it. I love that like slaw that they put on the chili. Everything. My advice to you is: do not make plans the next day, because they are you. You truly do rent those things. Um, well, you also had six of them. Yeah, I think I that might be less the Martinsville hot dog, more the fact you had six hot dogs. I, I don't like to be days. judged, but yeah, it's it's one of those things where they are a little bit on the small side, and they are pretty slick, so they do kind of they do kind of go down go down easy. Yeah, like dumplings. Um. So uh, qualifying, we watched some qualifying because we had gotten, uh, we had watched some qualifying on the big screen, right, Spider? Or did we watch from a suite? But Bubba got edged out by Kyle Larson by one one thousandth of a second. So Larson sat on the pole going into Sunday's race with Bubba in P2. By the way, I thought was uh, back to my point about Denny and Bubba being the best two on social media. I don't know if you saw this. Um, After the Larson... Bubba incident last week L- Bubba said to Larson like they were amicable after the race yeah. when they were discussing it they were, he was like I understand whatever comes up whatever's coming for me I'll, I'll accept it and then the next week he loses the poll by like one one thousand of, yeah yeah so then De- uh, Bubba posted like a clip of like him literally saying to, to Larson hey I understand what comes next and then it immediately cuts to Kyle Larson wins the poll over Bubba Wallace by one thousandth of a second. But Bubba impressed great, you, great right? Clip. Bubba Bubba was impressive on Sunday. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, he was on Larson's. Uh, Kyle Larson won stage one, but with Bubba right on his ass, so he did look good. And then your boy uh, Todd Gilliland, um, yep. they got to show that on TV. He left the wedge wrench. Uh, if people don't know, there's that wedge wrench that they put in a small hole by the back uh, by the back window, and they can adjust the um, rear suspension. And so these people put, you know, the pit crew puts it in and kind of gives it so many turns to um, ease the tension on the springs and the suspension. Uh, and they left it in as Todd Gillen had taken off, which was uh, which a bad look for Todd, who I know that you spent a little time with uh, on pit row beforehand. Yeah, I'm a big Todd Gillen fan just by watching on TV um, and kind of following online. But I've never really gotten the chance to have any face time with him. So mm-hmm. I took the time this weekend, introduced myself, told him I was pulling for him. Um, et cetera. He's even quieter and humble than I, more humble than I could have imagined in real life, which, um, I think I just kind of overloaded him with just speaking <laughs> at him, 
but uh, <laughs> I remain a fan nonetheless. So, Todd, if you hear this, I'm pulling for you, King. Let's keep leading laps. Let's go. Uh, Denny won stage two. Um, and then everything wound up being about Henrik. Everything wound up being yep. about Henrik Motorsports once we got done with uh, stage two. His 40th anniversary. There was uh, a whole part of the outfield, we'll call it, um, you know, because there is no big infield inside of it. So uh, there were trucks lined up on the far edge with just people in red inside these corporate tents uh, for Henrik. All the cars sort of had matching schemes to a degree. Numbers were painted a little bit different. Um, so it was a big celebration of Henrik Motorsports, and it couldn't have worked out better for these guys, uh, finishing P1, P2, and P3, which makes them the first organization to sweep the podium at Martinsville. Uh, Rick Hendrick wasn't there uh, because he had a knee replacement, but the next day while Rick was recovering at home, he just can't get around that well. Jeff Gordon, what a kiss ass. Jeff Gordon, did you hear about this? Brought the no. 20 Oh, he brought the 24 out to Rick Hendrick's house so he could get out there and take a picture with it, uh, you know, on crutches or whatever. So, I mean, kind of cool because big milestone, huge weekend oh, yeah. for the uh, Hendrick family. So um, so that was kind of cool. Uh, all four drivers in Hendrick Motorsports Stable have won in Martinville. Uh, Martinsville in Sunday's win by Byron was Hendrick's first win this season on a short track. So, um, so it was... Byron P1, uh, Larson P2, Chase P3, and then Bowman uh, was P8. So they had all four drivers in the top 10. So a pretty dominant performance. Um, with that, we'll just talk about what happened in the race. We'll do it with the over-unders. Um, I'm, I'll, I'll tell you right now, Byron is obviously the over. His 13th career cup win. His third win this season, leading all drivers. Uh, his second at Martinsville. He's got 11 wins in the next generation car, the most of any driver. And uh, checking the uh, DraftKings Sportsbook this morning, he's plus 50, uh, which makes him the favorite to win it all, the Cup Series championship. He's, he's Huge what? fucking – he's plus 450. Oh, okay. Yeah, why would I say? I thought you said plus 50. Yeah, it must, it must have lagged out and oh, all sorry. Yeah, it was yeah. just plus 50. <laughs> Imagine that. Like, what is, I've never even heard of <laughs> That's tight. Plus no. 50. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Willie B is now plus 450 to win it all. Um, so, congratulations to William Byron. Um and to uh, Henrik Motorsports for uh, for a great performance on Sunday. What else did you guys see over under was? I'm going to start with Byron right off the rip. Yep. Um, and I know that, you know, this was a Toyota race. They were favored going into it. And then after practicing qualifying, people really realized what the Hendrick cars had. Um, even so, Byron was 11 to 1, which as a guy that is led, led in wins last year, um, incredible value. The sports books didn't like him to win this race. DraftKings had him 11 to 1, and he went on to win. So, for a guy with that skill to be that um, long of odds and still get it done, to me, he over delivered what the expectations for him were, um, especially when his teammates like Larson were as low as like uh, plus 380, I think, pre race um, on Sunday. So, uh, definitely impressed with Byron. On the other side, within the top 10, also impressed with Blaney and Joey Logano. The Fords have kind of been struggling this year, still looking for their first win. Um, Blaney has been struggling. Joey had a good top 10 um, last week, but to do it again this week, I'm very encouraged by what I've seen him do in consecutive weeks now. Blaney was not in that category last week, and now he's in the top five this week, so encouraging from him. In the name of Fords, I also want to take an over on Stuart Haas Racing. Ryan Priest, 9th. Chase Briscoe, 10th. Um, Noah Gregson was 20th, I believe, and Josh Berry was 25th. So not the greatest for those two, um, but uh, Chase and um, Ryan Priest, really encouraging. And Stuart Haas typically does pretty good at this track, so they delivered. Eric Jones finishing 12th, also got to show some love for him in the weekly legacy and then i'm going to round out my overs with carson hosevar in a 17th place um finish i think he's been running really good given the limited experience given the lack of practice time etc uh hosevar is very 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 encouraging and i think he's probably i don't know one of the most exciting prospects right alongside ty gibbs I, can we even call them prospects anymore they're at the you can call hosevar more sure. than gibbs okay I don't know if they, maybe mean, they graduate once they make the cup series. Yeah. But do you ungraduate when you get de if you get demoted? Like I just think Gibbs is in a way more yeah. like he's going to be good and he's got the the setup to be good. Right. Hosevar is still kind of prospecting. Right. 
like it'll probably take him some more yeah proving. he's got a lot of steps to take um we should i, I think in the, in the weeks upcoming we're gonna do uh like build a nascar team for the next 10 years draft yeah and we'll we'll draft maybe, maybe the olympic break yeah, yeah if we that could be good starting then that's a good idea so stay tuned for that um but yeah um, Those are my overs. I'll, I'll definitely talk some shit on the under segment. Yeah, more, that's I've, what I got for now. I have more unders than overs. Okay. Um, obviously, Byron and Hendrick. Those are they dominate the day. Um, and then the only one that Spider didn't say that I had was Bubba, um, which we kind of talked about earlier. But oh, uh, did Bubba I not was, say him? Fuck. Well, good. <laughs> yeah. If, oh, if good. you did, that's if you firm, did yeah. say him, you would have had pretty much everyone in the top ten. Um, but yeah, he was started like qualified very well. And really didn't bounce out of the top five all day. No. Um, really, like, held his own up there and did had a great day. Finished for, P1. For, uh, he finished P2 in stage one, finished P3 in stage two, and he finished the race P4 behind the three Henrik guys. I, yeah. I, I thought it was an impressive showing. It was a great showing. Yeah. And that, that's all I have for overs. You know what I'm going to throw in there as an over? I'm going to throw in um, Mamba and the crew that do the uh, intros. We were there for driver intros. They must not ask some of the drivers what songs they want. Because when Martin Truex came out, he came out to Truex, going to give it to you, going to give it to you, the DMX song. There's no way Martin Truex had fucking requested that. And I'm sitting there, Truex, going to give it to you. And, you know, they cut out a lot of the N-words and stuff, thank God. But it, it was so... And then when Hosevar came out, it was H to the Izzo, V to the Izzo. Like, they were throwing some Jay-Z out there. I, I, I thought it was pretty fucking cool if you were paying attention to how stuff was linking up with some of the drivers. So it made for a pretty fun little intro section. We were going nuts when they were introducing the Xfinity drivers on Saturday, and we had a good time with the intros on Sunday. And again, it's one of those things that you get when you go to the tracks. You can be right there. You, you walk right up to an arm's length from your favorite driver walking by, and they did a very good job. So shout out Mamba and the crew. What did you guys see? So I'm going to save NASCAR's short uh, short track package for the end of this under section, if that's okay with you guys. So yep. I, I, w- I won't mention that. That wasn't my unders, though, just okay. for the so record, wanna... but I, wa- I won't talk about it. Yeah, so we'll do, we'll do the unders now. Um, what do you guys have? Uh, I'll start, and I'm going to work my way up. Christopher Bell finishing 35th. Um, in fact, in fact, honestly, I was kind of disappointed with Joe Gibbs altogether. Um, Danny Hamlin, the best car, and he finished 11th. And they were kind of, I mean, I know it was about Hendrick and 40th anniversary, but before the cars got to the track, everyone was thinking it was going to be a Gibbs car. Um, Ty Gibbs was 19th which has kind of been not, I mean, if you boil it down, that's decent for Ty Gibbs' second year limited experience. Compared to where he's running, that that is a little off the speed from what we've seen from Ty. So a little bit um, underwhelmed with what I saw from Joe Gibbs racing. And then also um, Spire. You got Zane Smith 31st, LaJoy 32nd. And that to me, I don't know, maybe I'm being too critical on the under, or maybe I just cocksucked Carson Hosevar too much on the over, but the discrepancy between teammates is is certainly something, and that's the second week in a row now where that's been, um, you know, in my face. So Hosevar 17th and his teammates finishing 31st, 32nd. Um, I don't know, maybe super over on Hosevar, maybe super under on on uh, Spire, but that's pretty much what I saw. I'm definitely missing uh, a few. Well, no, I think Chris Bell, he broke a tie rod on lap 110. Then I think he had a spin out later on in the race. Just nothing can go right for him, which happens a lot in Chris Bell races, including, you know, the championship race last year. So definitely put him in there. Um, What do you see, Uh, Quiggs? What you got? Um, Quiggs, you look like you're ready to shit on somebody. Oh, I'm sorry, Spider, you weren't done. I apologize. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Let me me throw these last two forwards at you real quick. And uh, it's, it's Brad K and it's Austin Sindrick. Austin finished 23rd, Brad K 24th. Um, I understand Ford has been struggling, but um, both the Penske cars finished within the top 10. Sindrick 23. He's another case of teammate significant discrepancy in finishing position, kind of seemingly more so on a consistent basis as of recently. So something to watch. Um but yeah, we're a little disappointed with Cindric's performance this week. And then Brad K, maybe I just had too high of expectations for um, 
RFK given the hot second half of the season they had last year, but um, I don't know. I need more from them. Okay. Um, for me, what I got, I guess if, if we give them an over for winning a race, we got to give them an under for maybe losing a race. Um, I got Denny's pit crew. Um, he had the lead with 100 laps left. They were about two seconds too slow on on the uh, pit. And I don't know. Denny's so good at Martinsville that if you have a decent lead and 100 laps, he should probably get it done, and they probably cost him that. Um, so give them an under. Um, I'll give somebody – this also you could honestly give him an over because he probably overachieved, but I'll give Bowman an under for may, coming forth. Maybe just get the full sweep. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh no, I like that. I mean, it, he he validified uh, Denny Hamlin's argument that he's the worst driver on the team. Yeah, but eight, eighth is probably better than I thought he would do here, to be honest. But it would it probably would have been even sweeter if Hendrick had one, two, three, four. So I'll give him the under for that. I like that. Um, yeah, agree. giving him an under for a top ten finish. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah. I'll do Rick Hendrick's phone. Oh. Um, he called in to the like fox after show and it was like clear what it was like uh the connection wasn't bad but his audio whatever his fun it sounds like he's talking into a tin can the worst audio ever um and not to shit on the broadcast again but the broadcast like they just sometimes don't show things that happen it's great like that last lap wreck which wasn't a massive deal because it didn't bring out the caution, but you they just never showed what happened there. Really? Which is crazy. Yeah. Like, you have to – you shouldn't have to, like, for something that important, you shouldn't have to, like, get clips off of, like, Twitter social. and social. Yeah. Um, it would have taken two seconds to show it, but, yeah. That, yeah. Those are my unders. We were watching Other from, than the package we'll talk about later. Yeah, yeah. We were watching from the booth, and it's a, it's obviously a different experience. You know what I mean? It's, especially the short track – where you see everything, we had yeah. a we had a vantage point that was just excellent. The boot, the suite that was next to us to our right, because we were to the right of the start finish mm-hmm. line up high. The one that was next to us to our right, there was an old man there, and I had put a couple of bags of merch, and he knocked on the window, take those down, because he was <laughs> trying to look at through our vantage point. So we really were in the catbird seat to watch most of the carnage that had happened around any of the uh, any of the crashes. Uh, I'm going to have to go again and, and and ding the broadcast crew because they didn't give fucking Byron a chance to wipe his lip again. This is the second race in a row that he won where he comes out and he, I don't know if he's eating uh, those little cheese and cracker things that you get in the airport in the car, but he comes out. He's got fucking Ujma all over his fucking lip. Give the guy a wet nap. Honestly, I don't, I don't want to see it anymore. So the guy now has consistently does that. Let's fucking take care of it. Tighten it up. Um, Did we get a big hat, Selly? I don't know. Another another right. win for Byron, where I'm not sure that we did. I don't so think we did. If anyone is aware of if we got a hat, Selly, please uh, send me it, tag okay, me, and whatever. That. Yeah, I mean, he, didn't he tell us he was? He said he was going to keep going, and then I don't know if he does like two pictures, one without it, because I saw a picture of him with the clock, and he did not have the big hat on. So maybe he does a couple of you know sets of pics. You know how I feel about the big hat. It, yeah, I, I don't care how you feel. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like it. Um, let's talk about uh, the 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 race setup itself. Everyone is complaining about the short track package and what NASCAR. This time, it's what Goodyear can do to improve it. There's two things that people complain about more than anything else with the quality of racing uh, that NASCAR has put forth, and that's that they want more horsepower and they want more fall off on the tires, right? That seems to be what uh, should cure what ails um, these races. And again, we've had a very good season, but we just happen to have a couple of short track races in a row, and we've seen what happened when you have tire fall off at Bristol. We've seen what happened when you get, like, you know, those rain tires at Richmond, the quality of racing, and then we've seen what happened without it. So people are getting frustrated what the short track package looks like when we're just on regular slicks. So... What do you guys think about that? What do you think that NASCAR... It, they said that adding horsepower wouldn't be difficult, but they're not doing it either. Is there a spot now where NASCAR should say, fuck it, 
let's just give people what they want. Add horsepower, see if that works. If Goodyear says, fuck it, let's give them tires that have more fall off and see if that works. And if they don't do that, why aren't they doing that? I I mean, I think they should at least be more willing to listen to the drivers. Um, and I, not to go back to the Denny Hamlin, Marcus Smith thing. Sure. But to me, I kind of use that as an example. Like, um, you know, Marcus Smith, as much as I've complimented him for re- re- renovating Atlanta, um, the drive, there's no one that knows better than the drivers whether what the changes are going to do to the, the track um, or the how the car, this most recent car, the next-gen car, whatever the hell we're calling it, um, will perform on a track that's modified a certain way. Like, one of the most um, interesting parts about the whole Frank Walks thing this weekend was hearing Denny Hamlin describe the architecture yeah. of the track and answering our questions about, hey, if it were this way instead, how would the racing be different? Um, I truly feel as though there's no one that knows better than the drivers for certain things. Now, I'm not saying just let them design the car, let them run wild with it. We'd be probably racing like Lamborghinis or something, but, um, hear, hear them out, hear the feedback. I know that NASCAR was super, uh, willing to listen to team owners and et cetera, um, impact how the next gen car would actually be designed so i think that they should also be given the driver should be given that luxury when it comes to how the tracks or the tires or the car is designed because they know better than anyone how the racing will be with the changes in question what do you think of denny's uh idea that uh junior should be the end all be all for this he said junior I, should go up to richmond should go to all these short tracks and he should run laps in all these different goodyear tires until they get it right and it doesn't necessarily have to be junior you know we're fans here let's get fucking harvick he's got a little time yeah. on his hands let's you know what somebody go get carl edwards imagine you see that guy come back and start you know deciding what tires you get all these guys to put in i think that's a a great idea one that probably won't come to fruition but you know, I do like that. Like, uh, yeah. almost have like a a NASCAR high council. That's yeah. just like five former drivers, like legends that everyone respects, and like them have a big input on decisions like this. When it's like when the drivers themselves are all asking for something, mm-hmm. they kind of say whether it's valid or whether it's yeah. Of course, everybody wants more horsepower, but we can't just give horsepower whenever we want like kind of be a voice of reason to right mediate between the drivers and nascar would be awesome i personally love that denny um used that example of junior um i don't know that junior would love it because he seems to have to be like you know wearing a million hats for nascar trying to um to help in all assets pretty much but um I think that Denny suggesting that is credence to my argument that there no one knows better than the drivers and that they should have more input than what they currently and do. And Dale's been a big proponent for it. Like so not for him being the voice of the test drives or anything, but you know he's also been pretty vocal right. on adding horsepower and fall off. But he, so And I think yeah, he's got he a horse enough, in that race. He has got enough skin in the game where he knows what what is good for TV, what is good for the drivers, the happy mediums that make it a perfect balance. And I think that would probably be go a long way. So I love that suggestion from Denny. Give me the high council. Give me the high council. It's got to be it's got to be th- th- three guys. It's got to be three guys because you can't have a tie, right? Well, you just named two and I'm I'm with them. The only third that I would add into there is Jimmy. I think it's got to be guys that have hung it up recently, yep. that have driven the next gen car, um, that have done this for a long time, and have established themselves as a trustworthy, reputable voice in the space. And I can't think of three bigger names that fit that criteria. And couldn't be, I don't like can't be a maybe, cup team owner or anything like I that. I mean, maybe Kurt like, Busch, but is he even cleared to drive? I'm not sure he would be allowed. I, I didn't mean to neglect Kurt from that kind of legendary. Yeah, but category. if you're picking three, I think. I don't, know. I don't know if Kirk gets in over any of those three. Um, but, yeah, I, I think that's those are the names. Like, What if there's a short go- track guy? What if there's a short track specialist, even if he's not a uh, full-time cup in Xfinity, but, I don't know, maybe he's got a cool nickname like 
Fred Flintstone or Redneck Jesus. I mean, is that a type of guy that we should throw in the mix there and have Kevin Harvick, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Bubba Pollard? You're already, you're already throwing him on that list. It has you just, to you be, just learned about him last week. I know. I'm just, I'm just kidding. We all did. It has to be people that are, are very well yeah. respected. NASCAR fans complain about everything to begin with. Mm-hmm. If you give them someone that they don't know having a say in something that they're already upset about, they're only going to get more mad. Yeah. So I think you have to be, if, if this were to be a true, real thing and not a hypothetical, you'd have to do it the right way. Do NASCAR yeah. fans complain more than other, like when they change like the targeting rules or, you know, roughing the passer. Remember how vocal everybody got in NFL? How it's changed. Not my league, like that type stuff. I'm starting to learn NASCAR fans when they decide to get vocal, they can be pretty fucking nasty. If I worked for NASCAR, I wouldn't check my comments section. To be honest, yeah, are I, they worse than in other sports? I think a little bit of it is because it kind of works. Nobody uh, like changes rules on the fly right. more than NASCAR. To where, like, I don't know if you're yelling about an NFL game or at best they're gonna change the rule at a summer meeting mm-hmm. and you'll get it in a year or like it might take ten years. Like, NASCAR can pretty much, like, race to race, kind of like, oh, we're doing this now, we're doing yeah. this now, um, to where that's probably where a lot of it, the complaining comes from, is like, hey, we might actually get them to change right. this. Well, not to keep doing callbacks, it's like Denny oh. Hamlin suggesting, hey, let's run the race on this date instead of that. Like, those things get momentum. And to your point, Quiggs, like, have you – how about the MLB perfect game thrown by, uh, f- forgive me, the guy, the Detroit Tiger, who a uh, Jim Joyce punched the guy or called him safe at third base, at first base with like two outs in the ninth. The guy lost his perfect game. He was clearly out. The evidence shows the video. Like they MLB didn't go back and change that. Or like Roger Goodell is not bending the knee of vocal and loud Twitter audience saying, hey, you know, let's try a Saturday NFL slate. Like, so I think you're right. It is because um, NASCAR and they also have the I mean, like they kind of tweak things as as they need to. Like, for example, Xfinity race is rained out if they're a lap short of the halfway and Cole Custer's leading in Chicago and it's raining biblical proportions. They may just call the race official like. Yeah. So, I mean, I see it's not necessarily as structured in the sense like of the traditional ball and sport leagues. But I think you're right. There is some semblance and truth to the fact that because they have a history of kind of being flexible with things, it also comes at their expense sometimes. Yeah. I got two points to make one. I hope that all this chatter about, uh, you know, improving the short track package doesn't take away from the fact that we have a very good season going on. I think this season, you know, particularly with momentum from Netflix special and all this other stuff and the, you know, the photo finishes that we've had and whatnot, I realize that, you know, you're you're looking at a couple short tracks in a row, like I had said, uh, but we got to see tires blowing up all over the place at Bristol. I understand that it can be frustrating. Second point that I'm going to make is that, you know, who's not complaining about anything this season? William Byron. Because yeah. he's got three races under his belt, and for a track where no one could allegedly pass, he started 18th, and he yeah. won the race handily. So Byron has the playbook. He's got the cheat codes. You know, So all this stuff that people are saying cannot be done, William Byron is doing it, like week in and week out. So I don't know. We didn't really mention too much uh, Chase Elliott, other than the fact that he – finish in the top three with um, the rest of the Hendrick guys. Um, yeah. But being in NASCAR suite, we we're lucky enough to be in NASCAR suite with NASCAR execs and seeing Chase Elliott in contention to win a race and Spider's like, we're going to need a caution here. Uh, once, you know, Byron had a you know considerable lead and one of the NASCAR execs had reached underneath the counter and he pressed a button <laughs> Yep. And all of a sudden, John Hunter's tire blew up and brought out the caution for the restart with Chase Elliott and William Byron. My question to you guys, why the fuck didn't Chase Elliott jump that restart? Even if there was a more keen eye on jumping restarts going forward after Denny and Richmond, there's no way. Right. I'm not saying, you know, the button thing, obviously, I made up. There's no way NASCAR is calling that on Chase Elliott, particularly if he gets off the schneid out of a rut, as it were, and wins a race at Martinsville 
on Hendrick Motorsports' 40th anniversary. Why the fuck wouldn't you jump the restart there? And also with Byron saying that he raced him cleanly, thank you, Chase, for racing me cleanly. Why did you race Byron cleanly? It's a little bit of bumping. Send him to the wall. You got to get him. You got to fucking win a race, Chase Elliott. Do you guys agree with me or no? Yeah, I mean, that was that was his chance. Yeah. Um, was right there. It's a, it's a lot harder, I think, to jump the restart when you're P2 than uh, P1 because P1, you're the leader and the tell is more like how much you pull away. I don't if care. Jumped... Like, my whole point is, I don't <laughs> yeah, think NASCAR yeah. cares. My, my, like, Chase Elliott could have done it blatantly and maybe yeah. gotten away with it. We won't know, but maybe gotten should've away with it. it. Yeah. Yeah, I think he, I think he should have. I don't know that they would have penalized him. <laughs> I, I it could have been, be... been blatant as fuck, and nobody would have cared, would have got him in the thing, and everything would have been okay. I'm being a little bit nitpicky. All right, let's go to uh, this week. So we have another full weekend of racing. Friday night, the trucks are running the Speedy Cash 250. Saturday afternoon, Xfinity is running Andy's Frozen Custard 300. And Sunday, April 14th, Cup is running the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400 from Texas Motor Speedway starting at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time on FS1. So we had a recent stretch of short track racing and now we're returning to an intermediate speedway. It's race number nine for the season. It's 267 laps. 400.5 400.5 miles on a one and a half mile oval in Fort Worth, Texas. We'll have some stage breaks. Uh, the first one at lap 80, then at 165, then check it at 267. Jimmy Johnson, who I know you guys just mentioned as a guy who could test for a good year, he's going to make his second appearance in 2024, driving the 84 Toyota for Legacy after his P28 finish in the first race at Daytona. Um, yeah. That's that's what we got. So Jimmy Johnson is back. Let me ask you guys before we go any further. Who's your final four right now? It seems like there's three that are everybody's final four. I'm almost looking for that fourth spot. Would you agree? It's Byron Larson Hamlin and one other driver. Who do you guys ha- do you agree with that? First of all, yeah, I agree with those. those three. I do. Those are the big three. Who's your fourth right now? Who's the fourth? That's, t- I, That's honestly. I didn't. I didn't prepare you for it. I apologize for you know. It's unprofessional for me to just kind of throw that out at you. But is it? No, I'm. I'm more just hesitant because the name that I'm thinking. I don't. I don't know. Well, I have a name in mind too. But we I probably think have it's the same get name. People triggered. But is it I think, Ty Gibbs. No, I. I think it's his teammate Christopher Bell who's going to improve. I don't think he's like. I think he's going to be a factor late in the season. I think Ty Gibbs has just been really good in a lot of races without getting a win. Um, he's probably not the name. That's probably a little too ambitious. Uh, I mean, I, I would like to see it be a four just for the sense of parity, but, I mean, we're how far into the season now and still searching yeah. for their first. If, if so. Truex had a win, it'd be him for sure. It might still be him without a win. Um, yeah, Truex, yeah, I mean, he qu- quietly, like, having... Yeah, he's leading points. Yeah. So what do we have? Truex, Blaney, Bell... Is that I mean, no one mentioned Blaney, but you said you might want to get a Ford in there. Blaney would be the Ford I pick, but I, I'm kind of pessimistic on the Fords given what I've seen. All right, so I'm curious, and I'll put it out to the fans too. If we're looking at a Final Four right now, just who you're guessing is in the Final Four? I think three are kind of no-brainers. Who do you have as a fourth? With that, we're going to picking the tires. We'll make some picks for this weekend. It's brought to you by DraftKings. Listen, <clears throat> it's not all about NASCAR. We got some big UFC this weekend. Las Vegas got UFC 300. DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of UFC, is giving new customers a shot to turn five bucks into one hundred and fifty dollars instantly in bonus bets with any UFC 300 bet. Uh, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code RUBIN. New customers can bet 5 bucks to get $150 instantly in bonus bets only at DraftKings Sportsbook with the code RUBIN. The crown is yours. I think I'm doing a, a fight watch for this at Sucker Punch in New York City with like Jack Mack and Big Ev. I know Robbie nice. Robbie's going to be like boots on the ground for it. Um, my son is a big UFC guy, so we're always going to throw in some parlays and whatnot. So I kind of let him drive the bus. But if you're going to watch UFC, you're doing yourself a disservice by not going to DraftKings and signing up and using the code RUBIN. Uh, five bucks gets you $150 instantly in bonus bets. Who do you guys like this week? Who wants to go first? Uh, I'll start. Okay. I'm going to keep it pretty simple. Um, William Byron is plus 700, and he is the fourth favorite for this week. I don't believe that there are three cars better than him. 
um, based on what I've seen and the success of Byron. So at seven to one, I think that's a fair price. Um, and defending champ, he's won here in in the last three races. Here he has two top fives, one win. Um, he's led eleven percent of the laps according to DriverAverages.com. I really like William Byron, especially at that price. I thought he would be closer to about four or five to one. Larson, his teammate, is four to one, which probably going to be the car that he's racing against. But um, well, obviously, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, I like Byron seven to one. And on the flip side of that, while well, I'm looking at this data as well, um, in the last three races here, Brad K has three top tens, one top five. I don't like Brad K to win. He's in my current um, prison of people I won't bet on. But I'm looking at top 10 odds, and right now he is plus 100 for a top 10. I will take that even money um, bet on Brad K. And that's those are my picks for uh, right now. I may add some if one comes to me while you guys are giving your picks or potentially for Sunday on the social. So check out Rubbin' His Race and Twitter for the latest picks Sunday morning. Quick, um, you want to go? Need, yeah. I need to get some sort of winners. I just can't get any. Mm -hmm. So I think I should get a winner out of this. I think maybe two, maybe three. Um, I'm going <laughs> what? Ky Kyle Larson, top three. Danny Hamlin, top three. William Byron, top three. Kyle Larson, I think top it, three. Is that minus money? Uh, plus 120. Okay. Uh, Denny Hamlin's plus 190. Byron's plus 200. I think I can get two of those guys to be at the top three. Um, and then, because those are so low odds, I, I should have a winner. And I'm going to go with Ty Gibbs as my winner. Oh. Plus 1,600. Really? Okay. Long odds. I don't. I don't even know. Think this is really his track, but maybe he comes out of nowhere, qualifies good, has a good race. So I'm going with him as a long shot, plus sixteen hundred. All right, that's it. All right, so I, I hear you. And then for me, I was sort of looking at top threes myself, and I found a little bit more value in going the menu. The only person who hit last week on our uh, on our show was me with Blaney being the best Ford. And watching that race, I'd said Spider. I don't I'm not enjoying watching Blaney in it. like he didn't look that good. Yeah. So for him to pull out the finish that he did, I think it's testament to him. So I had taken I think uh, it was P five, P six, right? Blaney uh Logano, so he edged out and I won that bet. I'm gonna go in a similar route this week because I was looking at a Tyler Reddick top three that was uh paying only plus one seventy. And instead, I'm going to get plus 250 as Tyler Reddick as the top Toyota. I think, you know what I mean? Like, I just grabbed yeah. a little bit more for just, you know, for less, I think. So I'm going to grab that. I'm going to do the same thing with Ross Chastain. Like, if I was to go Ross Chastain top three, I'm not getting a tremendous amount of value. But if I go Ross Chastain, which I already did, top Chevrolet, and I know that I'm, I'm saying that Henrik has a week off, basically. And I'll yeah. take Ross as the top Chevrolet. It's playing plus plus 650. So I'm going to grab that too. And then just to finish what I was doing there, I couldn't do the same thing with Ryan Blaney picking him as top Ford again. There just was no value in it. But I can get Joey Logano as basically – it's not a two-horse race. I, I realize that. But I'll get Joey Logano as plus 400 as the top Ford. So I'll do oh, that. I like I, that. Yeah, I think I kind of got some value kind of sitting around those. So Tyler Reddick, top Toyota. Ross Chastain, top Chevrolet at plus 650, and Joey Logano plus 400 as the top Ford. That's what we got for uh, for this week's race down in Texas. Uh, before we go, boys, I have to mention Talladega. Talladega's coming up quick. Spider and I are going to be there, as you guys know, and we're bringing some people with us. You can purchase tickets to a tailgate with Brianna, Chicken Fry, and Grace O'Malley in Talladega's famous North Park camping area. I think the DJ is going to be DJ Slim McGraw, who we've had parties with before. The guy's fucking awesome. Tickets for the tailgate will also include general admission to the Geico 500, a bar stool, Dega t-shirt, and access to a Saturday night count, uh, concert featuring Walker Hayes. So to purchase your tickets now to experience a bar stool sports tailgate, you actually go to talladegersuperspeedway.com. They're selling it through that uh, website, and we're going to have it all over our social as we get closer to Talladega a couple of weeks out. So these tickets are going fast. 
You're going to go to Talladega Superspeedway.com. You can party with myself, Spider, uh, Brianna, Grace, Dana Beers is going to be there, uh, DJ Slim McGraw. It seems like a lot of shit. Walker Hayes going down, um, t shirt, ticket to the race, the whole deal. So jump on that. We'll have a good time down in Talladega. Anything else you guys want to mention before we pop? No, just shout out everyone that took care of us at Martinsville this weekend. Uh, Appreciate all the hospitality. Also, I probably. I know this is not the over under segment, but <laughs> taking the over over on the fans there. Yeah. Um, and we've been to a lot of NASCAR tracks, and I'm not just saying this. Martinsville seemed to be more uh, spider and large or rubbing his race in or barstool, whatever you want to call it, fans than some of the other places we went. And I wasn't really expecting that. So um, big dubs for Martinsville. Loved it. So hopefully we can get back there sometime. Absolutely. All right, boys, have a good week, and we'll see you guys next week on Rubbing His Racing. See you guys.